Hey, this is Nixie P of Nixie P Entertainment. I have a special treat for you guys today. I am in the presence of the CEO of When Jesus Calls LLC, which is a church leadership consulting firm. Dr. Arnett Rogiers, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. Thank you, Denise, for having me. It's been a pleasure to be on your program tonight. That this is so awesome. We have been trying to um, get together and we had a storm last week and all that good stuff, but we finally made it. So God yes, is always yes. good. Well, it's a pleasure to be part of your ministry and thank you so much for finding an opportunity to be with me this evening as well. That is wonderful. Okay, so we are going to get right into it. Okay. Pastor Rogers, um, how did you want to become a minister and what made you sure that this was your calling? Well, that's an interesting story. I hope that we have enough time to really do uh, a clear reflection of that. I'll okay. try to be as succinct as possible, but <laughs> here's how the story goes. Um, way back in the early 90s, after I had returned back from the Gulf War, Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was trying desperately to make sure that I was um, doing God's work. So I decided uh, around 1996 um, to return to the church. I had been a, a member of the church in abstention. In other words, I had faith. I was christened as a Methodist when my mom christened me and I participated in religious services, but never really felt the need or the obligation to serve God, just to be a participant. Okay. And it was in 1996 that I uh, became a federal officer, a federal agent. And in doing that, I um, was required to go through the Federal Law Enforcement Training Academy. And in doing that, I found myself compelled to want to become part of religious services on a regular basis because the academy was about six months long and I was really feeling the pulling on my heartstrings. So I ended up going into a local church in Georgia and just participating in their worship services. And then as it would happen, the Holy Spirit convicted me and convicted me to such a way that I really wanted to rededicate my life back to Christ Wow. So I came out of the pews on the invitation and I decided I would become a member of that local church mm -hmm. and they received me and I started serving in the ministry as an usher. Uh, I just felt that that was my calling at that time to be a doorkeeper. Um, I, I, it might be a residence of me having some military bearing and wanting to be a protector, but I just felt that standing at the doors and serving others was a uh, a calling on my heart. Months and months and months of me serving as an usher, moving through the, the service corps as not only a head usher, but the president of the usher board later on. Uh, I was also invited to attend a men's retreat. And when I attended that retreat, we were very soul searching. And all of us as men began to open up and talk about our walk with Christ and our defaults, things that we were willing to do, but not able to do, or things that we should be doing, but were not doing. Okay. And so there became some real moments of, uh, I want to say, a Christian spiritual breakthrough where the Holy Spirit had convicted me in saying that you need to do more than what you're doing. And okay. so I ended up becoming a president of the men's ministry in my local church in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And, uh, and in doing that, extremely active in the ministry, uh, I became more and more uh, visual in both the usher board as well as in the men's ministry, hosting other retreats. And then on occasion, the Holy Spirit had convicted me on a given night that I needed to give the church more. And so out of the clear blue sky, as they would say, I felt a pulling on my heartstring to become a preacher of the gospel. And the message that I received that night was, I've given you all that I've given you. What will you give me? And now that was the message that I received from heaven. It was nothing that came from any oratory, any other person speaking. It was a direct runner 
or rhema word that I received. And I found myself crying. I was actually in a state of lamentation. I was sobbing and tears were coming out of my eyes and snot and all that other things that go through uh, emotional breakthrough. And that very next day, I began to search the internet for seminary to go to do seminary work. Now, in between there, I was a Sunday school teacher and others had spotted or had identified my calling, but I had not recognized it, nor did I accept it. And it was only after that breakthrough that I realized that I would have to answer God's call in the ministry of preaching and teaching the gospel. And so I enrolled in Liberty University as a seminary student with a desire to just be a good Sunday school teacher. And, uh, and while attending Liberty, I ended up taking on two graduate program degrees, one for a master's degree in divinity and another in master's in religion. Uh, it solely was the purpose of me wanting to just teach the word of God. And then finally, while on my final weeks of uh, completing my matriculation, I met the founder of Liberty University, the uh, late great Jerry Falwell Sr., Mm -hmm. uh, who was driving around the campus in his uh, renowned pickup truck. And he told me at that time that he had been observing me in my classes. And he felt that I had a calling in my life to be not only a preacher, but a teacher of preachers. And he asked me if I would be willing to enroll in his doctoral program there. Wow. And uh, it, it, it just bestowed upon me a great feeling that someone could see that in me. So I, before I even graduated with my Master's of Divinity, I was already enrolled in the doctoral program, and I began to work diligently in that program. And uh, as I moved forward, my local church was in Fredericksburg, and I became a deacon at that time. So you could see the natural progression from me being an usher to me being a Sunday school teacher to me right. being... Uh, a leader of the men's ministry, and then, of course, becoming a deacon, it was at that time that I felt the heartstring pull to actually preach the gospel. And so I approached my senior pastor and told him that I had received a call. And uh, from there, it was a matter of me going through the rigor of doing uh, practice sermons and preparing sermons and appearing in front of my local congregation and becoming licensed and then after that, I served as a, what we call a MIT or a minister in training. And I did that for about another two years. Now, interestingly, I was a deacon for about seven years and simultaneously going through seminary school to become a pastor or a preacher. And then when I became a preacher, I was able to be ordained as a deacon on one Sunday. And then about two weeks later, I was licensed to preach the gospel. So that's how God does things. He he moves in a way where he's always elevating you and he's always giving you some inclination as to what he wants you to do. But I believe, based on my own testimony, that it requires us to be attentive and astute to the voice of God, that you you have to be willing to hear his whisper so that you don't have to have him yell at you. And that's what I did. And so that's the abbreviated version of how I became uh, a preacher. And of course, after being a preacher for a few years, I began to canvass the communities looking to become a pastor. And uh, I served as what they call an interim or a, a uh, what they would feel as though a, a substitute pastor for numerous churches while they were going through their uh, pastoral searching. Uh, and then I ultimately was called to my own church. Uh, and that's the story that I share. Wow. Um, it's amazing how there are some people, those anointed that God has called them for specific reasons. It, it, it's, every story is so amazing about how God reached out to them and, and let them know what their ministry should be. So I applaud you for this, just the idea of you going through all that and having the tenacity to keep going. Um, that's awesome. That, that well, I, awesome. I, I don't want to take too much credit for that because I think it was really more of God's persistence as opposed to my acceptance. I, I think that that's I'd like to 
um, pinpoint or reflect upon in my own journey that um, God chased me. Um, he did not let me get away with thinking that I was satisfied at doing what I wanted to do. He came after me in various forms and ways. He put angelic hosts in my way, people who saw the spirit of preaching in my life. Others, elder and younger, were speaking to me. I was speaking of others. I actually did my own, uh, my mother's eulogy, unbeknownst to me, that that was a calling. I, I, I didn't know that. In 1998, I did the eulogy for my mom, and the presiding pastor of that church asked me, was I a preacher? And so these were the indications that there was a calling, but not an acceptance. And so I, I really want to, if anything, share that, uh, many times we in the ministry of Christ, whatever our specific calling may be, um, God will give you continual messages, uh, phone calls, if you will, text messages, if you will, that says, I need you to do something. And I believe that we are so consumed with our everyday mortal life that we don't respond as soon as he tells us that there's a lot of delay uh, but never a denial of God's work. We we delay responding, but he will not be denied. That's, that is just so amazing. We're going to take a break right now and come back okay. with Pastor Rogier's. I'm so excited. Okay, we'll be right back. 